Hi there, my name is Dan Roswood from Avnet Electronics Marketing. Today, I would like to briefly show you how to set up and configure an iBERT transceiver test for your Zinc 7000 base project. I will be using a Pico Z SOM, which has a ZC7015 Zinc 7000 All Programmable SOC on it. Here I have Vivado 2015.1 open. We're going to click on New Project, then Next. And for project name, I like to name it based on what we're using, which is a Pico Z7015. And we're going to be doing 3.75 gigabits per second with a 250 megahertz clock. And we're going to be using the onboard clock. And next, RTL project, do not specify sources at this time. And with only a few clicks, we'll be able to narrow down our chip. We can get away with doing this because we're essentially doing such a small loopback, it doesn't really depend on anything except the chip. Our values look good here. Finish. And we're going to initialize the project. Once this is finished, we'll want to click on IP Catalog and go up into iBERT and search. We're going to find iBERT 7 Series GTP. Double click on that to open the IP. And here under line rate, we can actually put in just about any value that we want. So let's choose 6.6. .6. And you can see this actually throws a little exclamation, which gives us our values that are the appropriate range. So 0 0.5 to 3.75. So why don't we change that back to 3.75 gigabits per second. Under reference clock, we will choose 250. You can see that protocol selection up here actually turned red. And that's because we have to now choose our protocol, which is going to be a custom 3.75. And on our reference clock selection, we actually have to choose ref clock 1. If you actually go through the schematics that are available on microz and picoz.org, you'll actually see that through the carrier, we're actually using the onboard tied into clock reference 1. For clock settings, this is actually choosing what we want to use for system clock. So that would be driving our logic. And since we're already piping that signal into our transceiver clock, that ends up on quad 112 here. So we'll choose that. And you can see that it actually grays out the I.O. standard at that point. Now to our summary, which all looks correct. And we'll say OK. At this point, Favato is going to update its hierarchy. And once that's finished, we can click Generate. So this will actually write out the files for us. So once that's finished, you can go up here to ibert 7 series gtp underscore zero, and we'll right click and say open example design. And at this point, I like to put it into a folder that's slash example underneath the design name itself. So this way we maintain the original source as well as get the binary. So we can say OK. And is it OK to create? Yes, it is. Now once Vivado is op done opening a new window and setting up the project, we're ready to click on the Generate Bitstream under the Project Navigator flow. We'll find that down here. So if we click on that, we'll get a message. There are no implementation results available. Is it okay to launch synthesis and implementation? Well, of course it is, since we want to make sure we get a binary from this. So go ahead, Vivado, do what you need to do. At this point, the tool is going to generate our Bitstream which we will use to test out the transceivers. Well, this concludes this tech tip. Look for more videos on this transceiver series of tech tips. The following videos will include setting up your Pico Z SOM and FMC carrier, using the bitstream we just made with an explanation of the live iBERT settings, what this information means to us, as well as how to use a tickle command to automatically generate, configure, and use this project. Here at Avnet, we are committed to accelerating your success through hands-on practical training and design support. Thank you for your time.